On this hunt, I'm heading into the mountains of central Idaho with my buddy Ryan Callahan for my annual exercise and frustration. Every year, I devote a week or so to finding a gigantic mule deer on public land, and every year I fail. But this time around, my hopes are especially high. I guess that means there's a long ways to fall. I would never marry a deer, you know, but I do like them. I'm Steven Ronella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. So this country just kind of goes like this, huh? Just... Yeah, yeah, this is like super, super mellow yeah. around here. But I like this spot just because it's, yeah, it's really broken. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of cool variations in, in the landscape. Uh, lots of deer. There's also, there's a big spring on that back wall. But I've seen deer out quite a bit also, so. Sound good? Yeah. One of my favorite guys on the planet is this fella right here, Ryan Callahan. We've hunted together quite a bit in recent years, and that's included some downright suffering. He's got a solid game eye, a quick wit, plus hunting wisdom that usually belongs to mugs three times his age. All that, and he was generous enough to invite me into a somewhat secret muley spot along a high traffic migration corridor. You know, it's frustrating when you hunt a new area. It takes a while to get where you can see stuff. Cause like you gotta like acclimate to the colors yeah. and the distances. Yeah. I hate that period. It lasts a few hours before you feel like you're dialed in, you know. He's been hitting this spot for a few years now, and his paranoia about keeping it secret is almost pathologic. It's warranted, I suppose, because not even an hour into our first day, the place lives up to the hype. Oh. Oh. To the right of those trees and, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, There's a giant up there. Oh, nice. I know this sounds insane, but I'm sort of bummed to find this deer. I love muley bucks because of how sly they are. They're so phantom-like, they almost don't even exist. But then there's this guy, living in total defiance of that. Something in me almost wants to get out of chasing this deer. Callahan and I both have tags, so really, there's only a 50% chance that it's mine to go after. We decide on a straw draw. A week from now, I'd propose a fist fight. Okay, short stick has dibs on that buck. So <laughs> Callahan likes to say that life ain't all cha-chas and ice cream that there's bound to be disappointment. At least in regards to mule deer, that's a fact of life I'm all too familiar with. It's just a very important thing for me to have that disappointment every year to keep me in check. So, Callie and Drew Shortstraw gets to go after the buck. I'm just gonna go up here where I can kinda watch what's going on. As I make my way up to a good vantage point from which to follow Callahan's progress, he pushes on towards the spot where we last saw the buck. By the time I'm in a decent place, both Callahan and the buck are beyond the ridge, out of view. All I can do is wait and hope for the best. As for Cal, when he gets to the ridge, he sees the group of does hanging out, but there's no sign of the buck. There he is. Oh man, that's a nice buck. Yeah. And just like that, walked out of our lives. 
we screwed up. We rushed in without taking the time to accurately assess the situation before making a move. But a hunter who's barely into a trip is like a guy who's barely into his 20s. He makes bad decisions and he makes them quick. What? You screwed? I mean, just knew something was up. His does were piled in right there. I didn't want to go plowing through them. Yeah. And try to get like a jump shot or something. So he split off that far from those does? Yeah, yeah. That, uh... Did you get a good look at him? Oh, yeah. He's pretty big. Yeah. A few moments ago, I was thinking that this buck was upsetting the standards that make me love old muleys. But by ditching his does and vanishing alone, he sets the universe back right again. They are phantoms. You know what, though, dude? You shouldn't be shooting bucks right off the bat because it's like you don't have enough time to get really worked up. Yeah, there, I agree that there needs to be a certain amount of frustration, anger, disappointment all wrapped into the process. <laughs> Undiscouraged by our failure this morning, we press on. It at least helps my confidence that this area is a place that allows for deer like that to grow up. We may not see a buck that big again, but I'd be very surprised if we didn't see something close to it. We hunt for a few hours without any new developments. Late in the afternoon, we split up in order to glass more ground. Callahan's going to check out a few hidey holes he's familiar with, while I'm gonna find one good vantage point from which to glass an area that Cal says is a travel corridor for deer heading out for their nightly feed. You know, when you're trying to hunt mule deer and be so strategic and smart and careful about everything, the thing that always nags at me is the, like, the luck factor. There's this book I've been reading by Ryan Hatfield called Idaho's Greatest Mule Deer. The guy that shot the biggest buck to ever come out of Idaho was out riding on his horse looking for a meat buck. A buck stepped out of the aspens. He shot it. All he thought about it was that it was a screwy looking buck. And it was three decades, it was 30 years later before someone found that buck and they were like, holy smokes, that's a big buck. The funniest part about that story, the part I like the most about that story, is that the guy's name was Grover. And I feel like if you're gonna accidentally shoot the biggest buck to ever come out of a big buck state like Idaho, it's good if you do it with the name Grover. Definitely toward dusk now. And uh, just like Ryan speculated, a lot of deer that were bedded are starting to feed their way out. I see a couple small bucks right now. Just deer kind of drifting down, you know, up here, like from my perspective, coming from left to right along that ridge line and feeding down into this open slopes. Just watching to see who comes through. from us, a couple of them. They seem like good hunters, man. They're just kind of taking slow, doing a lot of looking. But they're doing all their looking right where I'm looking. That's a bummer, man. I mean, I wish them nothing but the best, but it does make me want to go back farther up into the mountains. get away from competition a little bit.
The next day, we cased the same area in search of that first buck we found. We even split up for a bit more in order to cover as much ground as possible. But the valley seems totally empty and I'm starting to get frustrated. It feels like we're wasting our time. You think fish and game would extend our season if I told them I didn't want that morning? It would have been more productive to stay in my sleeping bag. Uh, it's public land. It's making the best of what you got. I know, but I just, like, I just felt a little foolish up there. That's why you're not here for three days. Sometimes you just need a clean start. So we head off to scout an entirely new area. After a piss poor morning with no action, Ryan and I have made our way to a completely new valley. We set up camp and locate a primo glassing knob. Already I'm feeling good about this location. It's got a nice long ridge with a broad face scorched by fire into a mosaic of ideal mule deer habitat. Plenty of feed, plenty of places to hide, and plenty of holes through the timber that allow me to see what's going on in there. And as it turns out, that mosaic is where I catch my first movement of the day. It's just a black bear working that hillside. See him? Oh, red colored. Yeah red bear. Now the interesting thing here is that Callahan has a black bear tag in addition to his mule deer tag. That'd be great though. I'd love to get that thing. Oh, for some reason I've seen a lot of color phase bears in this area. A lot of people think of black bears and they just know black bears that are black. This bear we're looking at is red. Rust color. It's mysterious, but what they think it has to do with, when you get into areas that get less than 20 inches of rain, you get into bears that have a high likelihood of various color phases. I don't know what about dry conditions makes color phase bears. It might just be a camouflage thing. You know, brownish cubs live longer in brownish areas. And then in areas where there's like thick vegetation along the coast, you know, black bear blends in good to the shadows. I've never heard that, but it makes total sense. I mean, you know, why do mule deer have big ears? It makes sense that it has to do with heat dissipation because mule deer in the southern end of their range have a bigger ear to body ratio than mule deer at the northern end of their range. Like African elephants have huge ears. Woolly mammoths have dinky ears. Hot weather, cold weather. I'd like to shoot this one. Fall bear fat. Yeah. You know what we ought to do that'd be the smart thing to do is I'll give you my call and I'll keep looking for deer. Yeah. Because why double the smell? And then why not have someone up here seeing what's going on? I'm going. With Cal off after his bear, I'm left to take in the beauty of this place. There's no question why he loves it so much. I wouldn't tell you where I was right now for absurd amounts of money. Cause there's like a bear over there, mule deer, mule deer, mule deer, and two damn bull out fighting over there. This place is ridiculous. You know, it's a bummer, it's poor Callahan. He's chasing after that bear, and that bear, unbeknownst to him, is just topped out over the ridge. <laughs> Callahan just got a shot at something, but I don't think he was shooting at a bear. At least not the one he was going after. He must have found a deer. Oh, what's this? There's a buck. Man, he's big by a deer. Yeah, that's the kind of buck I always wind up with, man. I love that kind of buck. But I'm just gonna keep hanging out. I mean, he's a 
a dandy for sure. You know, that sounds kind of weird. Like, if I'm on and I see a deer, it's not like the right one for me at the moment. I always feel like clarifying. I'm always like, but he's a dandy for sure. Like when you're dating, you know, and you're in a bar, if there's a girl you're not interested in, you're not like, she's gorgeous. No denying that, she's a beauty. Not the one for me, but she's a beauty. No, you just feel like, eh. I would never marry a deer, you know. But I do like them. It turns out I was right about Callahan getting into a deer once he realized that the bear was long gone. Since it got dark soon after he shot, he left the carcass in a safe place in order to pack it out tomorrow. But he did bring back one special part for dinner. I think this has like become my favorite piece of meat. People just who've never had tongue or maybe they've had it and just didn't understand what it was. Like they just can't get over the fact of what it is, but it's like this delicious piece of meat that nobody packs this out of the woods. No. It's safe to say that way less than 1% of deer tongues are salvaged. At what point did you say, like, I'm not going to find the bear? Or did you all of a sudden be like, oh, never mind, because there's a buck? I, uh, you know, I was like, well, I'm already here. So I went up this avalanche chute that was just as steep as steep can be. I go tiptoeing up that little knob, and of course I kind of get the feeling that I'm doing things right. Look up into that last little bit of light on top of the mountain, catch something squirting through there. But it was gray, you know, so deer, not bear. I look up there and I see a doe butt go through this gap in the sunlight, and then here's this buck behind her. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, that's a good buck. And I had her, like, perfect in the crosshairs, but he'd stand there, and for some reason, there'd be just this tangle of crap. I mean, that's my shot right there. There's just too much crap in the way. Try to reposition and get a better shot, but like, okay, just be patient. And then finally, he steps into this crack, No shot. And for some reason or another, he kind of like shifts his weight a little bit, cleared this branch. Stop, stop, stop. And I was like, oh, there it is. Bang. Down he went. And that was it. It was the best possible hunt. Like, it was a lot of hard work. It was by no means any sort of a gimme. I had to be careful. Yearned. Break my streak and not pulling the trigger. Good luck to do it on. But I had no idea how big he was, or I could just tell it was better than anything in the group there, so. Things played out in my favor. Yeah, we can dump this and use this thing as a little cutting table. Dude, that's perfect. That looks great. This is kind of the way I thought we'd do it. Like, just little chunks, throw some salt on there. So, to be totally honest with you, this is the first time I've ever had tongue that's like medium rare. Yeah. And it's not chewy, it's fantastic. Yeah. There really is no other part of the deer that tastes like that. No. And it, but it's good, I mean like, it's not just like different. That is legitimately good. If you had a dude who just liked food in all of its forms and you gave him a piece of ass, eat it and tell him if you like it or not, they'd be like, hell yes, what is that? 
Absolutely. Tongue. Then he'd be like, maybe I don't. <laughs> What's your plan for tomorrow? Try to shoot uh, another deer with a tongue. Get some more tongue. <laughs> Keep looking. And then I'm just going to see a buck, maybe, one of these days, and I'll be like, that's the one. Going after. That's the one I want to go after. And I'm not going to lie to you, man. Five days from now, six days from now, my definitions could change. But tomorrow, it had to be a buck so special that it warranted me ending our trip sooner than I would like to. Because that is, when you touch the trigger, the hunt's done. I want it to be a buck that's like so awesome and beautiful that it's like I would rather have the buck than our hunt.